Okay, if I talk now, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Hello, Gloria. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. I can hear you, Cam. Okay. All right. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I hear all of you. Loud and clear. All right. So it sounds like everybody's audio is working. Um, go ahead and get the meeting started. Uh, welcome. Thank you for coming both virtually and uh, and in person. Um, I wanted to start off with introductions because I know not all of us know each other. We do have um, 15 people joining us on Zoom right now. <laughs> So I'm going to start in, in this room and then we'll move over to uh, to the Zoom folks. Um, so I'm Nick Berzowski. I'm head of processing so I love the library. La Ellen, head of information services, Salina Public Library. Okay. And I'm Harry Willems, and I'm actually representing Dr. John from Slavin. I'm the alumni coordinator for the library school. Sharon Lawrence from the South Central Kansas Library System. Sarah Nicaro, University Archivist at Baker University. Jack Slinsby, I'm the director of the Atchison Public Library. And we just barely see Jackie leaning in a little and smile. Um, okay, I'm, I'm Robin Hastings. I'm Northeast Kansas Library System uh, Library Services Consultant. Um, and I manage the Recollections Kansas project. Um, so starting with uh, on my machine, it has Kim from Seckles, if you want to start with the introductions. Okay, I'm Kim Rudder, the consultant from Southeast Kansas Library System. And with me, Kim Burns, um, Southeast Kansas Library System, System Technical Services. Okay, and then the JOCO, or the JCCC folks. Barry? Uh, hi, I don't know if our mic's working or not. I'm mm -hmm. uh, Barry Bailey, and uh, this is Mike. Can you introduce yourself? Yes, Mike. I'm the systems administrator here at JCCC. Did our audio work? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, we have someone calling in by phone. I'm not sure who that is. Might come back to them, Margie. You want to introduce yourself? You're muted right at the moment. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. I'm from the uh, Central Kansas Library System. I'm the library technology consultant. Thank you. And then Michael. Hi, everybody. I'm Michael Zalabetto. I'm the director of technology at DPLA. OK. And uh, Michelle? Hi, I'm Michelle Kempton. I'm the Director of Business Development Strategy here at DPLA. Thank you. And Christine, you're muted. Hi, I'm Christine Peterson. I'm from Amigos Library Services, and I'm here just to see if there's anything we can do to help. Thank Oops. you. <laughs> uh, Ryan? There we go. Hi, uh, Ryan Otto, uh, Digital Scholarship Librarian and Repository Lead for Kansas State University. Thank you. Uh, let's see, there's Gloria. Hi, I'm Gloria DeCall from Ottawa University Library, the Library Director. Okay, and then A. Gustafson. Gustafson. Uh, not coming through, so we'll come back to you. Uh, Deborah? You're unmuted. Oh. You're unmuted, but I'm not sure we can hear you. Might have to come back to Deborah. Um, 
I'm Dustin Key. I'm the technical services manager here at Hayes Public Library. Um, and then we have Marissa Lamer, who is the Kansas Room Librarian. Welcome, thank you. Uh, Richard? Richard Brooklyn with the Southwest Kansas Library System, the consultant here. Okay. And um, I think Melissa just showed up from Lawrence, if you could introduce yourself. Uh, hi, I'm the Information Services Coordinator here. All right, Lawrence Public. Anybody else that I missed? Uh, the Johnson County folks, Hope? I'm Sarah McFarland from the South, oh. yeah, from the Cimarron City Library, and I'm in the Southwest part of the state. That's, yeah, I'm sorry. The way people are moving around, <laughs> it's hard to catch folks. And yeah, I'm Harms. I'm the e-resources library. Or librarian at Johnson County Library. And I'm Amanda Walmeyer. I'm the local history librarian at Johnson County Library. Thank you. I think uh, with the exception of a couple we weren't sure we could hear, um, that's on the list. Uh, Andrew Gustafson is from the Johnson County Museum in Overland Park. He's the curator of interpretation at Joko Museum. So. And Deborah Wright is Digital Resources and Initiative Manager at Pittsburgh State. So I think that covers everybody. So thank you very much for coming. Um, and uh, joining us here today, um, I guess the first thing I wanted to talk about was the digital hub, the process. Uh, I've gone through a couple of meetings. Um, I I talked to Michael and, and Michelle, who are here with us today from DPLA last week uh, about the process of becoming a service uh -huh. And then um, I went to Missouri, to Kansas City, to talk to them about their experiences with becoming a service hub uh, and got a lot of excellent information from both uh, meetings. So uh, I wanted to talk just real quickly. Uh, if, if Michael or Michelle wants to pop in here, just let me know. Um, but during our conversation, we talked about uh, kind of the timeline. Um, most hubs take about a year <laughs> or so to, to go from where we are now to uh, full ingestion. So this is not going to be an overnight process. But um, what the minimum requirements are 50,000 items of metadata. Um, which I believe the folks in Johnson County, or uh, I'm sorry, I keep doing that, Johnson, Johnson County Community College, and I'll finish it. Um, the CCC folks have said that they could probably have 50,000 by themselves. Um, Michael Church is unable to make it here. He's with Digital Humanities in uh, Kansas. There. It was closed today for uh, the day of the morning, um, so he was unable to make it, but he's got about 35 some. So I think we're, we're okay. Um, I think the 50,000 uh, mark has been met and exceeded. Um, so I'm not so worried about that. The other thing is that all new uh, are required to become members of DPLA, and that is a $10,000 a year membership. Um, when I first started this process, it was a, well, you know, we're asking people to do it, now it's all new members. So, which makes sense, it does have to be, um, it does have to be supported somehow. Uh, Could I ask a question? Sure. Uh, $10,000, who pays $10,000? We as a hub, as we, the organization. We, meaning the organization that actually has an infrastructure, specific organization, or anybody who contributes data to the hub, no matter how much, also has that's something we need to talk about today, okay. and, and that's a, a organizational thing. Um, some places they do charge each organization that contributes the data, and that's how they come up with the 10,000. Um, my boss is the director of Northeast Kansas Library System, and he, she is talking to the other library systems to maybe get $1,000 each from them, so there's 7,000. Um, so it might be more donations. Um, we have some here in the meeting who have also offered, I know Slim has offered small, um, you know, financial. So I'm, I, there's a couple ways we can structure it and we can talk about that today, but um, the 
funny fact is we are going to have to come up with $10,000 a year. And um, I would, as a group, as a group. And I would, I would really like to, um, okay. uh, I'd really like to make sure that, so that uh, we're not just coming up with next year's $10,000, but the year after that and year after that. Um, so that's one of the things that we definitely need to talk about today is how we're going to structure that. Um, um, when I first started the process, like I said, I wasn't sure it was going to be, but it is now. Um, so then uh, we had a, oh, they, they gave us a bunch of the um, documents, and I sent them out. Uh, there was a link in the agenda that I sent out to the, the, um, the, thing, the application. Uh, the feeds from our various places and, and mapping them to DPLA, uh, which I thought was going to be one of our hardest challenges, is coming up with someone who can have the technical chops to do it and the time to devote to it. In Missouri, they have one person who does that, and it's a lot of time. Um, Slim, however, has uh, possibly uh, offered us the use of some graduate assistance, uh, which will take, uh, I think, a big chunk of, of that. Uh, um, who uh, that? Your, your, uh, Dr. Young? Young? Okay. okay. Um, and that's for the? For the actual technical work of cleaning up the feeds okay. before they get sent to DLA. Right. So taking, taking the exports. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So um, the, the technical way it works is each of us have our, our repositories. And there's an OPA, OPI, HA <laughs> um, feed that comes out, I, you know, of course. Now that I'm forced to do it, I can't remember the name, but uh, it's, a, it's a harvesting fee. Most, uh, most of the major digital repositories do output data in that format. So um, what, we'll, what we do is we provide those feeds. Somebody has to go through and make sure that they are accessible um, for the DPLA. They're clean uh, for the DPLA. And then the DPLA takes that clean feed, combined feed, and uh, it tests it, and that's how our data and a small thumbnail of every item that we are contributing to the DPLA um, becomes available. And so that's kind of the technical, very fast and very technical overview. Um, I don't know if you had anything else you wanted to say about the technical part. Um, did I cover it? I'm sorry, did you just mention my name? I, it dropped out for a second. Okay. Yeah, I think. In general, the process ends up looking like, um, you know, we kind of sort of get you up to speed about our metadata guidelines and so forth. And then, you know, there's the process of actually assembling your data. Um, and then once we start to work on the ingest of it, we kind of work hand in hand with you to iterate over a few ingests to a temporary system where we can see what the output of that looks like. And we can sort of guide you through kind of making sure that everything conforms to the guidelines and it's going to look okay when it becomes part of DPLA. Um, so that oftentimes involves a few kind of iterations with someone on your end um, where we're kind of taking your data in and analyzing it and showing you it in a search interface. And then at some point we land on a, a version of mapping on our end from your data to our data and a set of data that looks looks like what you want to represent. And then, you know, then we ingest you for real into the aggregation. And then we set up sort of like a schedule of re-ingesting you based on how, how frequently you'd be updating your data and how, adding new partners potentially, um, you know, increasing the quality of the data and so forth. Thank you. Um, and Michelle corrected me as O A I P M H. That's <laughs> too many letters. Yeah. So, did you get a feel from Dr. John as to how how many, how much, how much work the grad students would have? Are they the only ones doing the cleanup? I'm I'm hoping to have a group of people. Um, I I think there's several people who have the technological chops to do it in in our state. I don't think that's a problem. And I, I, there's, again, this is another thing that we need to decide is how we want to, in Missouri, we have a single person who does all the work. And I think that's, um, 
and sustain personally. So I would like to split it up. So your GAs, the GAs from SLIM, may be part of, you know, maybe the Southern. What I would think is you're going to need some central person kind of mm -hmm. kind of guiding it. If you're going to have like mm -hmm. four or five grad assistants and several other people, you know, you could right. end up with a that looks like a camel. I mean, sure. we, need, we need to make sure we right. What I what I was really kind of envisioning is, is a, uh, with a chairperson who's the technical lead, and then the people who are working on it. But that's just my, um, this is a, a group effort, and so um, it, it may decide something different. But that's that's kind of how I was hoping um, we would we would come to a decision again today. Uh, kind of so is this something contractual? Is it something that that SLIM would we're going to provide this many people, this many hours? Uh, and um, it would definitely be a memorandum of, of understanding, at least. Uh, probably not a full blown legal contract with all the uh, lawyers involved, but at least a memorandum of understanding where SLIM says we can provide this many people or this many hours of. of People time, you guys can, can figure that out um, to the organization. Uh, and that would be kind of everybody who contributes, uh, everybody data or money or technical will be um, given a memorandum of understanding that lays out exactly what the expectations are. That's how they do it in Missouri, and I still have one memorandum already. So. <laughs> Well, for example, I'm basically 95% ignorant how this whole operation will be run. So could you give a brief overview? What is it? I mean, what's the digital public library of America? It's basically a catalog of metadata. Uh, then on the other end, okay, we have a bunch of all kinds of libraries, small and big. What do we contribute? Do we contribute? What kind of metadata do you want? What formats do you want? Could I just send you my records of a group of people and then they can work? on this slim, okay, they want to convert it to something beautiful. So just an overview of how it functions, because so far over right here is kind of a distributed group. I mean, what's actually a hub structure and who's doing what? Is there this technical infrastructure? Is there would be some kind of a computerized setup somewhere in the state through which start would be flowing through? Well, I'm mm -hmm. just saying because yes. um PPLA is a, it's an aggregator. What um, people from all over the country send feeds of data, which includes the metadata and a thumbnail. Um, and then it links back to the original in whatever repository. Like, say, we've got Recollections Kansas data. I, I create a feed, um, and Omeka can output a feed of my data in uh, this OAI PMH. Could, could, could you not stop using the word feed? Because okay. it can imply all kinds of things. Just Data to or connect export to. Yeah, no, I understand why right. it could be, but I'm making assumptions and I want to understand clearly without any kind of what's actually going. Like in the thing, where this thing is set up, who runs this, uh, where the service are. Mm -hmm. um, at the Digital Library of America. Michael could probably talk about the, the way the Digital Library of America or Michelle um, is set up. Way it would work here is it would be completely distributed. There is no central Kansas spot. Each of us would provide the metadata uh, to the DPLA. So, but then between the DPLA but and yeah. us, there will be some kind of a um, filter. Yeah, yeah. yeah so there will be there will be a filter through, but it won't necessarily be centralized. Centralized, right? right. So this oh, like PMH. Mm -hmm. So is is that like the format? when we put our metadata in Recollections Kansas? Is that the same kind of thing? Um, we did the, uh, it's, we put the uh, stuff in Recollections Kansas and Dublin Core. Yes. Um, but the data. output, the export, can be in multiple formats. One of them is um, the OAI PMH. There's also JSON, and there's, these are different formats that the data can take. Um, this is the one that, that PPLA requires. But for example, our library has uh, basically is H, H, HTML document, maybe, or some like images, some text headings. What do we need to do with it? What? Uh, to send it to someone. 
Do you use a content management system of any kind? Well, don't scare me. With <laughs> no, those, those, those are. Those no, are I understand what's going on. Let's, let's, let's try to stay clear out of very specific terminology because not everybody understands it. Let's just use the word file, let's use the word traditional formats that libraries use because of different levels of expertise here. So let's just stick to very basic. In children's language, let's talk about at this point. Well, I mean, we may have to go beyond that uh -huh. yes. the because this is the specifics of getting in or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And so, I mean, it may be at use or with your, or you take the, the technical stuff and try to talk about it in some of the, the um, or traditional language, but I mean, you can't eventually, you know, avoid it, no, no, no. the specifics of what it has to be. So, yeah, there will have to be some format, some way that your data can be extracted, exported, you know, computer format. And then, and that may exactly do that depends on what it's living in now, right? The content. So, yeah. if it's something that's cataloged in content management. Well, if it's something, if it's something that's cataloged in your, uh, it's in our catalog and you link to it. You so let's say right, right now, now our, we have our metadata since in my form at least. Okay. You know, catalog. So, so your so so process for getting it out of your system would be different than the process getting it out of my system. Yeah. So, right. yeah. But, but who will be dealing with it? Each individual institution. Who is responsible for converting into very specialized formats? We saw well, that. And that's what we're talking about the, the slim. The slim. Yeah. 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 Our, our and some, some and other. Yeah. Or maybe a group member. So right. we kind of go from the, the organization through this group, put together, and then. Okay. So some that. libraries that they have expertise, that they have. System that can handle the conversion, they can do it on their own, and then basically still channel, for example, through Slim Group, right? Right. Or Slim Group might take some of the data and convert it such a thing that creates if it's not. So that's right. Right. This is kind of a that's kind of the conversion. Yeah. So if you've already been doing things, putting it in it within Dublin Core, mm -hmm. in your recollections, Kansas, that's really simple for you then to take in. And put it in this other format mm -hmm. to set. Okay. Yeah, the, our content management system does that for us. Basically, okay. we just tell it we want it to um, provide the data in this format, and it does. And okay. Omega is a good about providing lots of different formats, but this is definitely so one of them. It seems to me that library systems that have already been working with getting um, local history onto Recollections Kansas are already working with. Uh, double court mm -hmm. to make that work. So that might be the place where you start training people to do this properly. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I did get is an email earlier this week, I guess, Monday, um, from the guy who does all the technical work for um, Missouri with lots of links to and how to and, and the software that they use to to help with the process. And so I've got that information um, for the lead to the technical <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I'd be interested just in looking at it to, so I understand mm -hmm. the process sure. better, yeah. no matter what role on sure. it. Okay. So every library is also responsible like to keep original documents that they provide access to is basically their responsibility, right? This group or the, the kind of the top player group, they are not handling right. either what? massive files or archival files or access files, whatever. It's dealing with metadata only. And, right. and it's basically a, aggregated. It's a, yeah, yeah, it's a finding aid. So you find you look up something, you find it on PPL, and you click yeah. on it, yeah. and that takes you in this. So it's basically it's another catalog. It, it, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so make, I'll attach information about the um, yeah, technical specs from David in Mo. Okay, take a note of that so that I remember to do that. But I'll attach those to the minute, meeting minutes. Right now. And Michelle has posted um, there's a map standard for DPLA. Um, 
that has to meet that standard, which is established by the DPLA community. And then there's a link to the metadata application profile, which is what MAP stands for. Um, and I do actually have that map. Uh, it's a it's a like a 60 page document, but I did I brought one copy with me. Um, if you guys wanted to look at it, but I, that's going to be more of the hardcore technical stuff. But <laughs> I'm hoping we can have a a uh, like I said a, a kind of a separate committee that manages that, so that the steering committee in general doesn't have to. But somebody on the steering committee needs to know about it. Sure, sure. <laughs> and I, I think probably the technical <laughs> need needs to be on the steering committee um, in some way, shape, or form. So, and the steering committee ought to have a yeah, like a, a basic idea of what's going on, and that could be training. Um, one of the things that Missouri does is they do a monthly conference call um, of the steering committee to just kind of keep up on on what's going on. Um, that's probably something we'll want to talk about doing um, maybe either a conference call or a Zoom meeting every month just to keep everybody informed about how progress is being made and that kind of thing. So that's that's another thing that we, we can discuss. So the, uh, this is an old version of the edit, that's why it's looking at it. Okay. Um, I did not update the agenda on the minutes, and that's what I was looking at. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so the discussions that I had with Michael and Michelle at UCLA, and the discussions that I had with David Lacrone in Kansas City um, gave me a bunch of ideas on kind of how this is going to be, can be run. Um, there are options, obviously. Uh, so, one of the things that I want to decide today is we have, we've already talked about the steering committee. I think um, that's probably going to consist of, of um, the majority of, of those of us who are, are here in this meeting um, are, are definitely candidates for that. Uh, but I, I don't know. The other thing is bylaws. Um, if, if we're going to continue this, because one of the things that um, the Missouri folks mentioned was there has to be a single entity that signs contracts. There's a contract that we have to sign with the DPA, and if the steering committee is not an organization in and of itself, which probably won't be necessarily, there will have to be a, a contractual entity of some sort. Um, whether that's the state library, whether that's the, you know, one of the big colleges, I think in Missouri, it's the um, in one of the big humanities. Um, Sometimes there's a library system that will volunteer to do that. I know Nichols, yes, I know Nichols would be, um, we have done before. We, I'm sure we will be happy to do it again. Um, I just don't want to, you know, if somebody else wants to do it, I don't want to hog all the glory. <laughs> and so uh, I'm, I'm putting it out there. If, if you're fine with Nichols doing it, that's fine too. But the point is, We'll, we'll need to have bylaws of some sort so that we will have all this stuff um, kind of laid out so that we know what's going on. Again, um, over there in that pile of paper somewhere is the bylaws that Missouri uh, Hub uses. And I, librarian through and through, I, I think we should probably steal theirs and adjust it to fit our needs. Um, so if, if you guys agree, I will send out a copy of that at when we're done here and we can start um, collaboratively looking at that and getting some ideas. Um, the discussion, the, what the bylaws are going to have to decide um, and what the bylaws are going to have to lay out basically is, is the structure. So like I said, there should be a, a, a steering committee of some sort. Um, we need to decide on the structure of that steering committee, how many people we think is, is, should be on it. Um, again, in Missouri, I think they have 10. I didn't, I don't know, Michelle, um, if you have any insights into the size of, of the various hub structures that you work with? It really varies depending upon um, if there are large aggregators of data within the state. Usually they might have a seat because they're representing multiple institutions in their 
uh, their data feed. Um, or if you're more distributed, um, sometimes steering committees are also based on expertise. Like you might have somebody that's really doing the outreach to get more institutions to provide data. You might have somebody, an institution doing the technical piece. You might have an institution doing the administrative financial piece. So they might all have seats on the steering committee um, as well as you want different types of institutions represented. Some maybe that archives, some libraries, universities, historical societies, so that you're, you have that kind of the, the scope of institutions participating. So I think all of those are possible. Could I ask a question, and maybe you plan to do a question and answer session at the end, but I'll still ask my question. Why do it? Um, How would it help libraries to give the data out? There's already all kinds of catalogs, organizations, all kinds of volunteer efforts of different kinds of different combinations. What's the point of this? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, and it's one that we actually talked about uh, with the Missouri folks, what kind of benefits they were seeing. Um, they do get some traffic from the DPLA. Uh, some. So some, not a not, uh, uh, yet but that's they're new and they don't have a whole lot on on there yet so um but they do they are seeing traffic coming from there so there is the fact that people are finding their stuff and using it um and for me that's that's the big thing is is as a librarian what we do is share what we've got and so this is um, it's a way to share it with a national organization we have a statewide uh or history repository with recollections Kansas, this will just take it and instead of being just statewide, it will it will make our stuff available nationally. Um, so that's my uh, kind of why I'm I'm so interested in doing it. But it's very it. general. I mean mm -hmm. with some specifics is there a catalog for example open but to Google searches. Mm -hmm. What kind of formats are thinking to put it out? I mean how much oomph they in general have where by the way I didn't hear the answer to the question. Where yeah, um, that's actually right. We didn't stop. Michael, where do you guys have servers? Um, in the cloud or are you centered? centered? I, I know the DPLA started on the East Coast. Yeah, the, um, the, our infrastructure is hosted out of Amazon Web Services and it's built to sort of scale with traffic and to use a content delivery network to make sure that the the information we're serving is cached and, and available you know nationally and globally um we devote a certain amount of resources to making sure that that stuff is up 24 by 7. Um, mm -hmm. is any kind of a physical place for let's put in quotation mark a headquarter of this organization oh where are we headquartered like um i mean i guess as a staff we are distributed there's a a concentration of some of us in the Boston area, but our executive director is in Chicago. Our uh, headquarters, though, are officially in Massachusetts. That's true. for the company, even though we are distributed. And actually, a, a core of us work out of the Boston Public Library, but we're our own 501c not-for-profit organization that's supported through grants, supported through membership dollars, and um, you know, government like IMLS. Who started it? Boston Public Library? No, it was actually started um, by a number of stakeholders. Um, Bob Darton was a big driver out of Harvard. He was the um, head of Harvard Libraries. Uh, John Palfrey was one of the, the kind of founding directors. Um, this about, mm, I want to say 10 years ago, this varied group of stakeholders, came, Library Congress came together to look at what it would take to build a national digital library. And um, and now CPLA has 30 million items from 4,000 contributing institutions all over the US. So, so that's kind of where we're at now over the last five years. Mm, thank you. And that kind of leads into a question um, that came up on chat. Uh, from Kim Redder, and actually I can answer the first one. What happens to our data if DPLA goes away? We're not actually sending them our stuff. We're just sending them pointers to our stuff, so our data stays where it is. 
Um, but that's actually a good question about um, what, you know, how DPLA will continue. Um, one of the reasons why I'm, I'm invested in this is because I, I think DPLA seems like a, a concern that will continue on into the future. It seems well supported. Um, but if something happens, um, what happens to our, our data, our uh, our, our contribution, exactly. Thank you. I guess um, one thing to point out is that we make all the data that we transform and aggregate publicly available in a number of formats, one of which is a bulk download. So that would exist no matter what happened. Um, I mean, we are actively working to make sure that we're a sustainable organization and can fulfill the commitments that we make when we work with folks like you. And so, um, you know, it's an ongoing concern for us to make sure that we can fulfill the commitments that we we make. And, um, you know, it's something that I think that we feel confident is going to continue. Um, were we all to be hit by a meteor or something like that, you know, that kind of problem, I mean, I think that there are other people in the community that could step up and take on this work based on the fact that we make everything really open and freely available. All our source code, all our data, the, the mechanisms by which we make this site work are, are available and anyone can freely make a, a, another DPLA based on what we've done and published right now. So if you wanted to start DPLA 2, um, you, you basically have the tools to do that uh, based on what we've published and made freely available. Is the DPLA open to Google searches? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yeah, just to just to when you talk about data, I just want to make clear that the data that gets ingested into DPLA is metadata and a thumbnail, the thumbnail representing whatever the original object is, whether it's a book or an image or a video, right? So the 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 primary source data which is coming from your repositories, you guys keep and manage. We're not a preservation system. We're an act we're an access layer to the nation's cultural heritage and scholarly material. So, so the person does not have to go to actually a specific site and to type a search in a specific box, right? They can just go to generic Google box, type something, and data from your catalog will pop up, right? right? That's true. I think you'd probably get the best experience going to our, our search interface only because it's like a specific type of content search. But absolutely, pages from our site do appear in Google. We actively work to try to uh, increase our uptake into Google's indexes and thereby working with other search indexes as well. And, you know, that kind of work is part of what we do as a service is to make that stuff discoverable through our interface, through our API, if in case someone wants to build something else based on the aggregation, and there are examples of that. And then, you know, just by having this bulk download available, which allows people to look at the data on mass and do research on it. Okay. Yeah, and the and Google might find some of the materials, like if you put in George Washington, for example, but it's not going to find the same number and depth of materials if you put in George Washington in the DPLA site. So you're going to get a much shallower set of results on Google than if you go directly to DPLA. Um, and also DPLA, the 30 million objects, they're all curated materials from libraries, archives, museums, historical societies. You know, Joe, whoever, can't upload his content into DPLA. It comes from an institution that's doing that active curation. So it's, they're vetted, curated materials, which makes DPLA, again, unique from just a Google search. And another interesting thing that um, I should mention as an example of what I said earlier regarding our API and, and our public data, there's a project called Umbra Search, which is available at umbrasearch.org. They are a project based out of Minnesota that does sort of a slice of our data um, that's specifically tailored towards African American experience and history in the United States. And we work directly with them to make that happen. And so, you know, part of our being a silo and a specific content search involves enabling other specific types of content searches like that for people who know that they want to be looking in that kind of direction for the, the hits they get. So 
we kind of like enable that as well as make our own site? The name of the, um, of the group has a word public, include also academic um, libraries or academic institutions. Yeah, there's absolutely, um, you know, the products of academic libraries in our in our collection. Yeah, if you look at where the materials come from, out of the just under 4,000 institutions, 25% are public libraries, 25% are academic libraries, and then the other 50% come from archives, museums, historical societies, and, you know, a, a whole range of smaller um, institutions. Is OCLC a stakeholder? No. OCLC is a partner in many ways. We work with them to get content out of their content DM systems, you know, when, when that makes sense. But they're, they're a completely separate, different, not-for-profit institution. Michael and Michelle, this is Gloria. I have a question for you because I sent you a question. Um, there are two libraries in Kansas that currently um, have the um, collections harvested by DPLA uh, through um, JSTOR Forum. Will that change if Kansas gets a hub? Um, I think, you know, we don't necessarily determine where the data comes from. We basically only ask that it only comes from one institution. So, you know, as a hub is sort of a, a collection of people who have gathered to, to serve the purpose of gathering that information. The organizations that are part of that JSTOR forum feed could decide to go over to the Kansas hub feed if they felt like it. Um, we, we don't really mind either way. We just want, you know, your entity to be a sustainable and workable one. And that we want the data to only come from one place so we don't have to figure out how to, you know, manage that essentially. So if we signed a contract with you already, because we had to do that through JSTOR Forum, um, that, I mean, that would just still stand, right? Yeah, I think the, um, if I'm not mistaken, there's more than one contract, but I feel like the thing that we're speaking of here is the data sharing agreement, which essentially just kind of outlines the rights that we all have involving the data that uh, you would be allowing us to publish it in an open format and then and share it with others. That's the, the main aspect of that agreement. Yeah, and I guess the other thing is that JSTOR has their own um, criteria for selection. I don't know if you have a broader range of content you'd want in DPLA um, that would be available to you through the hub infrastructure. Thanks. Okay, the other thing Marcy mentioned a uh, benefit for her uh, is the expansion of access to data collected by different institutions across the state. So instead of having to go to Red Lake with Kansas and search, and then go to the Kansas Community Council and search, everything's kind of bundled together. So there's a, um, it was not that, but <laughs> it just got a one stop shopping and she puts it. <laughs> um, so there's another reason why. Sure. They are. They're just closed today. Oh, KU. KU. There's a, we've got a representative. Oh, no, not KU. Um, I think uh, the folks from Lawrence were talking to the KU folks. I don't think there's anybody from KU here. There is somebody from K-State and the Kansas Humanities. I, I went with him, Mike Church, to Missouri. Um, they're very interested, but his supervisor asked him not to come because they're closed. And well, the state library, same thing. State library, we have interest uh, in. They're closed, and so they were unable to make it. But um, Bill Bowers, Bowers, Bowers. 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 Thank you, um, from the state library, was planning on the. Um, they're, they've done a lot of digitizing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we set up a, a site for them. Yeah. So again, there's lots of, uh, lots of different places around the state that um, interest. It's you know our our bad timing, but. We haven't decided on the day that the funeral happens. <laughs> so we're missing some, some key folks here, but um, there is interest from them um, just an inability to, to make it today. So, um, Robin. Robin. Yes. Just a quick observation and question. Uh, here, the system 
we, I cannot speak of any commitment funding wise because this has not even been brought up to our board yet. <clears throat> so we can't even discuss that. But three of our libraries are already out there on web content nationally. Besides having a central point, how, what's the justification of spending this money again to what they're already doing? Because that's going to be one of the questions I'm sure they're going to ask. Um, again, making it, uh, well, you've got, what web content? We have Sarah, she has stuff on the web from Cimarron City. We have Joan from Kingsley. And also Kara at Ashland now has content on their website already that's already out there nationally. Mm -hmm. So um, the justification well, to spend this extra money with they're already doing themselves. Uh, well, they, I mean, we're, I, that's one of the things we might not charge for contributing institutions. We may be able to um, come up with the money from the uh, different sources. So it may not cost contributing institutions anything um, other than the actual data, which if they have it already, um, and the only thing is, um, like right now, I know they're each, they have their own websites, but those websites, um, when somebody goes to a central aggregator like the EPLA and searches for stuff, they're not getting Kingsley's. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I want to weigh on this, Robin. It's all about findability, you know, and as we move to a semantic web and we're trying to get linked data, if I can go to one spot and find things from those three libraries versus me thinking, oh, I need to go here, or oh, I need to look at Recollections Kansas, because a Google search sometimes doesn't come up with that vast of amount of information. So, you know, while it's $10,000, if we divide it up among all the, the stakeholders, the partners across the state, I, I think it would be something that would really launch Kansas into the forefront of getting their information out there. I mean, think about someone that's doing genealogy research in Rooks County. I mean, they just used Recollection Kansas last year and put a vast amount of uh, information on there. So yeah, I, I can certainly see this, and I know it's there's a lot to work out as far as details, but um, I mean, I think we really need to give this a lot of attention and, and uh, you know, think about how we would market it and all those things just to make it our information about Kansas available. I don't really think it is right now. It's there, but you need to be a really good researcher and know how to get there. Yeah, I guess um, two points I'd make are one that we're not a publishing entity in the sense that, you know, everything that we have in our aggregation lives somewhere on the web already. We essentially are a registry and a search interface. Um, so, you know, this is allowing someone who otherwise wouldn't be able to find stuff based on the current web search mechanisms, which, um, you know, if you ever search for something on Google and dig your way through the search results, they cut off after a certain point because displaying all those results is actually technologically infeasible. So um, just because your stuff's on the web doesn't mean it's going to get found and it's not going to necessarily find its audience. Um, the other thing is that we're, we're a network of, um, organizations like yours that work together across the country to build this project. And part of membership involves being in that community and having access to those people. And in some cases, some services that we've been able to provide for them. So the value proposition for being a hub and being a member is a little bit broader than, you know, just showing up on our website. It's sort of like a kind of a constellation of different things. Yeah. So there's, uh, I'll bring kind of two points that, so we have, uh, everybody that's a member has a person that represents their state on what we call a network council, and that group gets together quarterly to talk about how to improve access, discoverability um, across the nation for all the content that's being aggregated, what projects and possibilities we want to move forward together. Um, so that's a really nice place for somebody that maybe only has a local perspective or a state perspective to really um, come together with, you know, 50, 49 other states um, to see what they're doing. And the other thing I'll mention is that the findability from a single interface is very attractive, but some of the feedback we've got back from our partners, our hubs, is that they have ex extended their reach to other areas of the country. So your content is not only seen by people in Kansas, 
but it's seen by people around the globe that might not have known about you or found that content otherwise. So it's the, it's the visibility outside of your state, which has really been exciting to many of our partners. Okay, and I've been having a, a bit of a discussion with Andrew from JOCO. Um, he was asking about how much the, the 10K, if it was uh, per institution or for the hub, and it is for the hub, uh, there's just one 10K. Um, and so uh, he also said that Michael's point is excellent. His website, JOCO History, is accessible to anyone with internet access, but it's not necessarily being accessed nationally. This may bring national traffic. Um, so I think that's... Uh, we need to, yeah, that's just something to consider. Um, so basically, that's kind of the, what I've, I've put together and <laughs> discovered uh, over the last few months of, of looking into this. Um, that's kind of how it works. The, how Missouri does it, how the, the other hubs, um, they do it is, you know, we can, we can take that and, and grow. But the main thing that we need to do today, I guess, is decide on a governance structure. Um, come up with um, something that will continue on um, with the, the monthly meetings or whatever, you know, however we want to do it. Um, and then review kind of the, the general application. Um, Figure out what we need to know, basically, is, is what I think is the next step. So, um, we come up with, with that kind of structure. Um, we need to figure out what kind of information we need to know to get to it. And then we need to have, if not necessarily commitments to funding, because everybody's going to have to go back to their institution and, and talk to folks. And, and like I said, my, my boss is talking to other people. So, but have some ideas for funding. Um, and that will be sustainable. Whether we want to do a charging the institutions and know that that might limit the number of institutions that are willing to um, contribute their stuff if they have to pay for it as well, or if we have enough interested parties that are willing to um, contribute that we can put together the 10,000 sustainably in cheap. Um, so those are the big things that I'd like to get decided today. Um, I don't know how, um, I guess, do you guys on the Zoom meeting know how to raise your hand? Anything at the bottom participants? Sure, that's understandable. What I was going to, um, what I was going to ask is who is interested in being uh, a part of the steering committee? Who would, who would like to have a seat on that steering committee? Um, if you're interested on the Zoom meeting, you can raise your hand. Uh, it's on the participants. You know, I think I think one thing that needs to be considered is if the sustaining contributors probably should be represented. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you have systems, for example, contributing a thousand dollars each, yes. they probably should each have a seat. Mm -hmm. So how big of a steering committee got structure do you want to do with? Um, well, that's kind of, I'm, I'm interested to see who's who's interested in doing it. Um, I think in Missouri they have about 10 or so people on it. Um, but I think, I mean, I, that's not a limit. Um, I think we need to have, I know if you get too big, it's, it becomes unwieldy. Uh, but we also need to make sure that those who are interested um, have a chance to participation is not going to be limited to the steering committee. Obviously. Right, right. Um, because I, I feel the steering committee, like like I mentioned, there's um, the technical stuff. I think somebody on the steering committee needs to be like lead on the technical stuff, but there will be lots of, of opportunities for people to um, contribute. And, and communication between members who are not on those committees as well. Mm -hmm. And so I and so I'm just tossing out the idea that maybe together and it may not, it may be an awkward in between step, but a pre steering committee mm -hmm. then to sit down together and talk about what the, the details of it. Um, yeah. I'd, like to, I'd like to be involved in 
that for okay. at least. Okay. Um, okay, so Sharon, uh, she's thinking pre steering committee. Um, it's hard to, to come up with mm -hmm. a, a concrete report today. Right, and this yeah. is a, this is one of those, um, it's a big enough group that's hard to, to handle, especially with us being um, separated uh, into virtual and, and physical. Um, so, uh, Margie has raised her hand. Margie. Margie, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. I was. <laughs> I do for all of them. Um, Thanks, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, Andrew would like to be oh, my phone just jumped right out of my purse. Oh, good. Oh, thank you. Um, right out of my pockets. Um, Andrew would like to um, be thought for the uh, Johnson County Steering Committee. Um, I don't know that I can. Commit SLIM, but if they're going to provide some of these uh, GAs, probably someone from SLIM, whether it's me or someone from SLIM. Okay, so we've got um, Steering committee is large the steering committee. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we start with the larger one, maybe we can you know, filter it down a little bit for the actual one. I don't know. Um, okay. Uh, I guess I, I'm interested. So put my name down to you. Um, okay, and Jackie. And I'm interested as well, but. Um, and this is Gloria. Um, maybe uh, I could serve as part of maybe the smaller academic libraries, um, supporting them. I don't know. Okay. Well, we can we can uh, um, figure out how you want to do that. Let's see. And I think. Okay, so Deborah, you're from Wichita, right? Pitt, sorry, that's right. Oh, I think the Wichita folks weren't able to make it again. Um, okay, so Pitt, uh, WSU or Wichita folks? She's from Pitt's first. Day. No, I mean, you said the Wichita folks. Um, Is that WSU or? Yeah, Wichita State. Okay. Um, but I think they're closed today and they weren't yes, able to make it. So. Um, Kansas State may be interested at a later date. So we'll we'll leave you off the pre uh, committee, but we'll we'll keep you informed. I do have that mailing list of all of you that whether you're on the steering committee or not, you'll continue getting emails from me until you don't miss out. Okay, so all right. So yeah, that uh, uh, Kim from Cycle sounds like most of the uh, Kansas libraries. Um, and Richard from um, Southwest is interested that can't commit until he gets approval, which that's fine. We'll we'll go ahead and start with um, with that group. Make sure I didn't miss anybody's hand. So what I have is Sharon, Margie, Andrew, Robin, Gloria, Jackie, and Kim. And Slim. That's right. I didn't have a person for Slim, so I'm just going to put Slim to be announced. Um, that's eight people. That's, that's a reasonable size to get started. And then, um, okay. Hey, Robin. I just wanted to mention also that Johnson County Library is definitely interested in being a part of that as well. And actually, we basically work lockstep uh, in lockstep with the Johnson County Museum. So um, Andrew and Amanda and I are all kind of working together. So just to know that we are there in that presence, but we are happy to let Andrew volunteer on our behalf. <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's, uh, I've, I've got him on the list. So um, yeah, and my director, Gail Santee is behind it 100%. She just gave me a thumbs up. So Awesome, awesome. Okay. Um, 
So Michael and, and Michelle from DPLA had another meeting at 11, so they are, are off. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm on my way out because I've got a meeting at 12, but I just want to say um, thanks for inviting me, and I left my email in the chat. Um, any of you, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them, and, you know, particularly on specific uh, areas where I could provide guidance based on what prior hubs have done. So thanks so much. Thank you for coming. Thanks for answering our questions. Um, okay, so we've got a, uh, a start on the pre steering. Um, I've got the notes for everybody. That's, I think, where the, like I said, this is, this is difficult to wrangle with everybody on uh, different formats, but um, I think that's probably where we'll come up with. We want to we want to charge them with um, just creating a steering committee, or do we want to start working on other stuff with or wait until with the pre steering committee like bylaws and the funding commitments and and putting all that together? We want to wait until we have the steering committee put together. Yeah, I think okay. you're ready so that it, this mm -hmm. group could put together an okay. steering committee, right? Not actually begin. Not beginning the work. Beginning. Okay. Cool. That's and hopefully in a short time frame. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, Sharon, Marty, Andrew, Robin, Gloria, Jackie, Ken, and someone from <laughs> um, I'll get a meeting together very soon. Um, probably Zoom. Start working on putting together a steering committee. So okay. Um. The only other thing that I keep forgetting, I keep talking about the technical expertise. Um, the other thing that is needed is somebody to um, manage metadata. Um, and again, the steering committee might be the, the place for this, but it is something I want to make sure is mentioned um, that we have uh, we have someone who's willing to look through the metadata as it's uh, submitted. It was is that different than what the GAs are doing? This that would probably be different um, because the the GA cleaning up just the technical the, the code okay. from the feed. Um, generally, there will be a librarian looking at the metadata, making sure that <laughs> things are are um, it's kind of a cataloging <laughs> sort of a thing where uh, we'll be. Looking at the descriptions, not the code. And does David from Missouri have a workflow for that? He does not, because he doesn't do a lot of things. I'm not sure who does. Um, that might be something I need to, to find really out. important to make sure, because that's a lot of mm -hmm. eye searing work. Sure, and it can be. And because we all use different metadata standards, and um, it's kind of one of those where you know, I don't know. Shared vocabulary or how it's exactly going to work out because I'm just not sure about <laughs> um, how they do it in Missouri, how they do it in other hubs. Um, that is one of the things I'm going to uh, DPLA in April uh, in Chicago. Uh, I went a couple of years ago when I first started thinking about this. Uh, one of the nice things is uh, the train that goes through Chicago at six o'clock in the or goes to Lawrence at six o'clock in the morning, ends up at Chicago at three in the afternoon. That's a long time. And watch TV and, and uh, not have to drive or fly or. <laughs> so I guess you know, looking at my notes here, and I'm seeing we have the pre steering committee and we have a metadata manager. Is that what the pre steering committee is going to start looking at and maybe discussing names or talking to people? We can, although I think that would be more of a steering committee. I mean, I think that's. That's something the pre-steering committee is going to have to keep in mind. We need metadata people in the steering committee. The steering committee will primarily be looking at her. Well, was Marty on that? In that? Mm -hmm. yeah, and she, she's good at mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. She is on the pre-committee, or pre-steering committee. So yeah. um, we can, you know, she can have her say about it. But yeah, I would imagine we'll want to. If we're talking about steering committee, we'll want to keep in mind we need a second person, we need a metadata person. Um, not necessarily the people who are going to do the work, all by themselves, 
but they will be the people who lead the, um, the effort. That's kind of how I see it. Again. You know, in, in that list, you're also looking at deciding who's going to be the group that becomes the contract signer. But, you know, if it's going to be, you know, Nichols are going to be someone else, I mean, it needs to be that needs to be decided. And that's probably the full steering committee is going to be doing that, but those are, should be in that list of the things to yeah. to discuss yeah um and the requirement for technical expertise and metadata persons so yeah those those things will all have to be talked about the other thing is um governance of the steering committee which the steering committee will be governing the uh the hub <laughs> uh but that's Possibly, possibly something we'll want to have in place when the steering committee starts. Uh, in the slate of officers, um, people are going to come up and and do that. So that's another thing I'd like the steering committee to to look at is not only who's going to be on it, but have kind of nominations <laughs> so that when we the steering committee meets, we can vote and start working. So that sounds like something else we can. We can look at. Oh. All right. All right. Um, I'm assuming that there will be other council members who are not of the steering committee that will be um, of input and that sort of thing. But Maybe list or group of some sort or whatever. Um, no, it's just to me that the, the minutes of every meeting need to be distributed on candlelights so everybody can see what's going on. Something to keep it open mm -hmm. and yeah. informed. Okay. Um, yeah, I was assuming that that mailing list that I've got going would be the kind of or you know, make sure everybody on that was informed because they have specifically asked to that the meeting minutes on camera is a good idea too. Um, just so that. Because I know that it was like the second or third email I sent out before uh, Slim went, oh, hey, I, yeah, I, I, know. Know. <laughs> I hadn't noticed your first couple. So um, you never know who's wanting to get laid at doctors as well. <laughs> right, mm -hmm. right. And that's, um, again, another uh, committee that the steering committee needs to think about is, is outreach, and um, both in a marketing sense and in a getting new institutions to contribute in sense. Well, you know, I guess it's going to be very similar to Recollections Kansas, you know, that, that as I understand from when I was working with it was not widely adopted, but kind of slowly gaining ground. You know, I guess we need to have some way of, you know, maybe improving the marketing of, of that. So. Yeah, because um, we never did any marketing other than to the systems uh, for Recollections Kansas, and that was um, those things that kind of fell through the cracks. Um, and if we have a, a group of people who are interested in letting other people know and maybe, you know, doing marketing, uh, that would, would, I think, be be helpful. Because, yeah, uh, Recollections Kansas is growing, but it's, it's a slow and... Um, Digitization project is a lot to ask and a lot of training on top of the follow work that you already done. Right. <laughs> and, and, and you know, the state library has been doing this for several years. They have a, a room and a person mm -hmm. devoted to it. I know they work with the historical society. So there's a lot of stuff out there that yeah. needs to get uh, put somewhere. Mm -hmm. We just need to have a process for it to, to go through and, and to. Uh, Make it fine. So that's what I'm hoping to do here. You mentioned the number of items that mm -hmm. Johnson Community College had. What about reflection? How much? 1,600. <laughs> oh, no, 1,600. Yeah. Okay. Well, that the state library must have. They must. Yeah, right. Yeah, because yeah. 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 yeah, when I was first looking at it, I was like, well, the first thing I talked to the DPLA about was do smaller states 
do we get for the break on the number of items? <laughs> you know, I, at the time, I had 1,200 items in um, in recollection scans, and uh, they went back to their commit their steering committee, and they came back and they said, no, 50,000 is a requirement, but you can do it with other states. And I'm like, well, let me see. What and that's when they started to contact me. And then um, JPPC, uh, Barry, uh, when I first got in touch with Ken, he said, well, I think we have 50,000. Michael from Digital Humanities was guessing 35, um, at which point I was like, I think we got it. <laughs> yeah, well, in four State mm -hmm. University. Yeah. yeah. There's somebody here in the meeting from. Uh, maybe he's public, not for um, Well, the cataloger from um, the Central Kansas system just went over for Hayes. Yeah. Um, and so she would probably be one of them to help. Yeah, that's right. She did. Get, get their stuff. Mm -hmm. um, what about the funding structure? Because honestly, that's probably going to be the biggest hurdle for me. Mm -hmm. um, that's like one of the easiest things to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, library like systems. Library yeah. systems. Yeah. Looking at this, and I've only you know been out for eleven months, but I know Gail is looking for projects. You know, and a thousand dollars is is nothing to library systems. So okay, maybe Southwest and Northwest, and I don't see Northwest here. I don't see North Central here. Um, but you know, they you know. They'll have to be brought around, and I think that's what, what, uh, think that's what Laura's doing. What mm -hmm. Laura's going to be working on. So, because I think if we can get all seven of the systems to pop in a thousand bucks, and then like I said the the larger institutions, I think the smaller institutions are that's kind of our our duty as those bigger. Um, and again, I haven't talked to the state about what they're willing to contribute. Um, I know Christine Peterson is here from Amigos, and um, she's interested in helping. That might include financial. I haven't really talked to her specifically. <laughs> um, I mean, we can, I, I can't promise anything here. We can contribute something, but we can't contribute $1,000. Sure. Right? No, and that's, that's not okay. going to be a minimum. I mean, yeah, yeah. There, there might be places where, you know, it would be 200. I'm just, um, I'm just afraid that, and I think somebody mentioned it earlier, um, and actually that's on the road. <laughs> Which you guys weren't in, involved in that conversation. Um, but just like trying to figure out how to manage $50 contributions from 100,000 people is going to be difficult. Well, that's that's why you need an institution mm -hmm. with a bookkeeper right. that's already <laughs> doing this. So. Uh, and yeah. no, Lisa's wonderful. So she's a bookkeeper. Well, and you mentioned sustainability. And I think mean, that's always the issue is. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to just start this. We're really committed to this right. for the long haul. And that's for our, our memorandum of understanding. Right. Um, I would like to see it out at least three years, if not five. Um, yeah, yeah. Just, just yeah. because for funders, uh, yeah. definitely, because I don't, I don't want to have this no. scrambling every year for fundraising uh, all the time. I mean, I know some things change, and some people will have to drop out, and other people will step in. If we can have the majority signing a five-year memorandum of agreeing to <laughs> support them, you know, at whatever level they can, um, I think that'll be good. Well, I know I'm looking at it from um, a public library standpoint of the state library mm -hmm. databases. Even mm -hmm. it helped us tremendously when there was con when there were contracts that were, right. you know, a five-year contract. We right. didn't know for five years yes. it's going to be taken sterility. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, so I would I would say definitely five year point would be a great one. That's uh, that's something again the steering committee will decide that that's definitely, definitely something I'm interested in, in the sustainability, mm -hmm. making sure that we have um, that money coming in next mm -hmm. year. And actually it's at this point, I don't even think I'm not sure for it. Twenty nineteen it seems a little um, Close. Close. Yeah. <laughs> a little generous. Uh, we may not actually be able to join until 2020. And so, you know, it's not like we're saying we're going to up the money now. So, um, if we could do a 2020 to 2020. So, do you, does it have to be a fiscal year? Um, because, you know, we're talking about the, the pre yeah. the, the pre committee, and you're talking about the uh, steering committee and that all can be done easily by summer so 
and I'll keep you jump in in July. A year. We possibly could. Um, I I don't know if they would prorate it. Like you know, uh, if we did half a year, it just hurt us five thousand. I'm pretty sure it's ten thousand a year. Whether we jump. In January, is there a year always start in January, or is it a year from the date that you? Join. That's a really good question, and unfortunately, they're gone. Yeah. Um, but I will, I will make note of. Um, that that would make a difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Michelle's email was there, so I'll for Michelle. Uh, and you can say, get us, get us in sooner. If we can can begin our year, you know, whenever we're ready, mm -hmm. and um, and go from there yeah. instead of having to meet their fiscal or calendar. Okay, I will um, I will ask her that, and uh, so it, it looks to me yeah. like actually all of. Number five on your agenda is something that the pre begins to work on and then into the stereo committee. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, um, mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> and that's the funding, the appointment of technology and metadata people, uh, the membership of the committee and bylaws. Mm -hmm. So those are all going to be in that can down the road. <laughs> well, like you said, if, if, if we already have the basic document, we just need to customize it. That, you know, it's pretty simple. Yeah, and I think I have. <laughs> um, okay, well, here's some, um, I mentioned the memorandum of understanding. Um, this is the one that I stole from Missouri Hub. Uh, I just admitted that on, on camera. That's the kind of thing that I'm looking at. I'm thinking I have a couple of copies there, Harry. Yeah, I think it's I think it's actually only a couple of pages long. Anyway, that's the kind of thing that um, I'm planning on stealing, and then again, I think. The Bible. I think it's a much longer document. Okay, I'm going to give you guys more. So if you want. Okay. Although one might be enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, around here somewhere, uh, I've, got the, I've got all kinds of paperwork we could look through. But I think. Data exchange agreements, and I thought I had the, the bylaws somewhere. But if you go to MoHeritage.org, um, I don't know, Missouri Heritage. It's not no heritage, but it's uh, I'll have to look on David's email because now I can't remember. Is it Missouri Digital Heritage? Yes, Digital okay. Heritage. Oh, you want me to put the link in the chat? Sure, thank okay. you. Um, I think if it, in the about section, there's about Missouri Digital Heritage. Um, oh wait a minute! No, this is the this is the state one, the official state one. There's a different one. Let me check and see. It's the one that uh, um, is the um, kind of overarching um, organization for the Missouri Digital Hub. Okay, 
You didn't do a Google search. I did. All I came <laughs> up with was the digital heritage. <laughs> okay, here we go. Missouri Hub, that's what it's called. Okay. okay. MissouriHub.org. Sorry. And I'll put that in the chat. MissouriHub.org. Um, and they have their bylaws on the um, on the site, and that's actually what I was going to propose stealing and um, reworking in proper library tradition. But it's it's pretty short. They have a uh, name, description, <coughs> mission, uh, partners council, which uh, I think is their steering committee, officers and duties. Meetings. So yeah, it's it's pretty pretty basic. I think we can take it and, and run with it. Um, so yeah, I'd like to see us uh, just rework that. Okay. Um, is there anything else that? Think we can get done today, <laughs> but in the next half hour or so. Um, or any questions? The DPLA folks had to had to leave. So, whose idea was this? Whose responsibility? Um, I think a lot of people have been thinking about it for a long time. Right. Right. On Jim's side. I think a lot of people can. Yeah, yeah my whole church has been trying to do it for a couple of years. Uh -huh. um, I, I think it's just we've got finally got together. So um, I think somebody from K State's been looking at it yeah. for several years. Well, yeah. people were looking to do this not just for a few years. People were looking to do this for many, many years. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about this particular habit. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm the one who managed the. She's the, one, she's, yeah, <laughs> she's the one that started stirring okay, well, the here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. We have been we have been looking into it. Um, like I said, Michael. Has been, he was talking about being joined with Missouri Hub and they weren't picking new partners. And, and so we just finally got to the point where, um, I'm sorry, I, I get distracted because I'm talking with my hands and I keep catching myself on the screen. Um, we, uh, uh, when Michael and I got together um, and then Sharon came to the uh, KLA meeting, it, that's just kind of, but I started the KLA meeting. I'll take responsibility. <laughs> 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 Glory. Yeah. It's it's been a uh, I don't know whether it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If it all fails, um, I'm pretty sure. Uh, okay, so okay. Uh, Kim Burns and Kim Redder from Seckles uh C -K -C -K -E -K -L -S, have to run out to another meeting, but they'll visit the sites online and watch the recording. Thanks for being a good start. Um, anything else? All right. Well, that was that was painful. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, is there anything else from the uh, uh, on Zoom? It'll be great to see how it progresses. I think it's exciting. And I was really excited to get on the digital public library this morning and see the great stuff that's out there. There's I think that we really need to disseminate that as well. That is true. Um, and I think that's one of the uh, issues that Missouri is finding is people just don't know what they don't know. Right. Um, and that is. You know, you, you have to market, market, market constantly. <laughs> um, however, they mentioned um, some of the stuff that, you know, the APIs and the things that they're building. One of the nice things about them being so open is a lot of people are using DPLA material and not realizing it right. because they're using they're apps and, yeah. and, and coming in at from different ways. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that will help. Well, I was excited. My daughter's a teacher, and when I clicked into that, there's you know, I love the topic areas mm -hmm. and then the times in history and everything you can think of. And was, what I thought was very cool for teachers is there's lots of plans and class kind of things in there. So, I mean, I see it as an incredible resource that I don't think anybody on my staff knows about, but they will. <laughs> you know, 
some of the systems have uh, examples, specifically the schools. Hi. Hey, everyone. She's our new enrollment advisor. Ah, so, okay. Gloria is our head librarian. I'm in the middle of a, so. I was listening to a meeting. <laughs> yeah. so. While I'm busy here, okay. so it's just like. Well, we won't. We won't. That's okay. So. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you as well. We're trying to get something organized. Okay. Well, we'll let you go. Yeah, I just wanted sorry, to bring so. you by. So. <laughs> but that I was going to say, you know, if we can do, we can get some of the local TV stations interested in doing a story, which I think, you know, Wichita's got a station or two. Other radio stations will will do stories on. Um, you know, that's yeah, 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 definitely. definitely. We're raising. Right. That's what Recollections Kansas, that's what I kept saying. The reason for Recollections Kansas is because the libraries have all these boxes of pictures sitting on their shelves. They're only accessible to people who are physically in the library. And so, um, like like Michelle said, Recollections Kansas is definitely an access, not a preservation. Um, and it's very historical society. They're, they're more interested in preservation. But, um, that's one of the things we wanted to, you know, get those out of the um, shelves of, of those desks. Yeah, yeah. So I'd be able to walk in the library and do them like that. Library. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Many times the librarian doesn't know what sure. they have. So. And the hard part is really, I know, for us looking at it, is how much time, right? Which you just talked about, you mentioned it, Sharon, is yeah. the time to spend digitizing and the time to spend putting metadata on there. And I know Selena had at one point a project going and it it really bogged down stitcher because of time sure. you know and and staffing money and people being stretched too thin in too many ways so and the question the big question is why anything similar in spirit at least is not percolating in Kansas yet and this has been going on this type of activity it's a different level of combinations reiteration manifestations probably but it's so nice to see there is a national thing. No, no, you know, of course it's that's... national. But the question is, what do you think? Why? I mean, so then I would like to hear the opinion on Kansas State Historical Society. Yeah. Bigger institutions, can you, who would be a natural leader state-wise to do this type of thing? Uh, why this doesn't happen? Well, you know, I think like anyone else, they have limited staff, they have exactly. limited budgets limited time, you know, if we can, can, you know, broaden out the base and get a lot of people working on it, it's going to be a lot easier to make it go. Yeah, I think, I think previous um, attempts have been kind of limited, we, where, you know, it's just an historical society, or it's just, a, and that, that is hard to maintain and, and sustain into creating something, so hopefully this broader. Well, I think, I think the model we're looking at is, um, um, our resource sharing with interlibraries only right now, you know, the, the courier, you know, that, that's taken years to get around to all the libraries, and, but, you know, persistence, and I think that's what this could be, so. Exactly, yeah. Well, the pizza at the blue, uh, blue <laughs> yeah, at 12.30, um, so. <laughs> Where is it at? Uh, it's just a couple of blocks. That oh, is it that? It's on, yeah, it's yeah. on Santa Fe. Yeah, it's I'm just a block or two. And, brewery. and you should know that Slim is paying for it. Oh, <laughs> and Slim uh, is paying for our, our lunch. So you guys in Zoom land, um, we'll just have to buy your own lunch. Buy your own lunch. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send some pizza on the courier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Well, like I said, with the um, folks canceling because of the day of mourning, uh, we'll, we'll have plenty of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered for nine or ten people, and it's not going to be that. No. So, I'm going to be able to do it. So, there you go. So, just see the floor. So, yeah. That's, I yeah. wasn't going to, but now I mean, I'm not so here. <laughs> I would like to sit next to him. I don't want to. So, <laughs> well, sure. Yeah. Yeah, you're more than welcome, and, and well, he invites you. Well, think about it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right, Lori. I think she had, well, here's something about my wife. 
and she had birthday recently. I think she can give lunches almost every day for like a month. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I have a question. Could we have a list of people who participate? Could you email uh, so a list of people who participated? In the did, did anyone like, take really, really good notes that they're right. going to? I mean, I took notes. I, I didn't take some names. I, I intended to take um, better notes, but it's hard to type at the same time. Yeah. So I did not take as good of notes. Um, I did have, I saw some folks on the shared note. Uh, document that I had, but I've got some notes um, here. But if anybody has, hey Robin, I took some, so I'll type them up and send them your way. This is Margie. Thank you, thank you. So, also, will, will you be getting in touch with us with us that have volunteered to be on the pre steering committee and what have you? Yes, um, I, I guess one of the things. Do we want to try and have a meeting this month? Uh, I'm if you. I'm open if you just, I mean, I've got the next couple of weeks, but after the next week, I'll be out till the, probably the first of the year. So maybe January, early January might be more realistic. I don't know. That's what I'm afraid of with yeah. the holidays. Um, I don't know how people are, are taking things off. Um, so how about I, um, this afternoon, send out a doodle poll? So that yeah, that'd be great. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the meantime, would it be helpful to look at those bylaws and kind of start making some additions corrections modifications because i looked them over and they look they look <laughs> i'm with you i mean why reinvent the wheel they're like five pages yeah well i don't want to redo them so but I <laughs> um yeah we can certainly uh we can start putting a document up um a uh, google doc that we can all look at and make comments and then yeah. your committee and i'm thinking too that you know since this is kind of the, the foundation of this it may be there should be somebody's notes go up on can live as to what transpired. Well, Marty, we may not get it. It, did, it is still being recorded, actually. Um, that's one thing I have a, I have a real hard time remembering sometimes they hit that record button. It's a running joke in my office. Um, so I set this up to automatically record the yeah. cloud. <laughs> so as soon as we opened it up, it started recording. Um, so there will be a recording of the. So if so, somebody wants to watch us. And I'm going to say that link could go in a, in a can like post as to what's going on. Yeah, for people who want to sit and watch the whole hour and a half of us. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, and some notes, Marty. But notes. yeah, Marty's, Marty, Marty uh, did you, do you have the link to my um, Google Docs notes, Marty? I do have the link to that, so I can okay. add to them if you want. That would be awesome. Yeah. But I just, you know, kind of jotted down what we were discussing, the, the details about especially membership and et cetera. So I'll, I'll add them and then we won't have to kind of remember what we discussed. But that would be awesome. But to just to give me somewhere to get start, I, I think the, for all those of us, it might be a good idea just to start taking a look at those um, bylaws because if we're going to talk about governance, they've, they've lined it out pretty, um, pretty well. So, um, you know, and and then in the meantime, trying to figure out how we're going to pay for it and um, et cetera will be important. But um. yeah, I, I think um, it'll be interesting uh, what the, the systems uh, decide to do because, like I said, the, um, my boss is, is working on them. So we'll see how that, uh, how that comes out. Um, OK, I will get a link to the Google Doc. I'm, putting together right now with the bylaws, maybe. Um, I'll get a dual poll out today for the, the pre-committee, uh, pre pre-steering uh, committee, committee um, for a meeting in January. As soon as I get an, a date for that meeting, what I'll probably do is then take the notes and the recording and send a, uh, and the announcement of the first meeting. Um, to Canva. I would say probably in, in the doodle poll with Dr. John. You know, okay. As Add him as the, the contact for now until he decides. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Robin, you can be on the pre steering committee stuff too. I don't know how much help I'm going to be, but yeah. I'll at least. I can probably do something. <laughs> do you do H on your own? No. Uh, after Mr. Nathan Mark level. Um, 
out, like I said, to, to the pre-steering committee folks today, and I'll send one out to Cam Live when we have um, all of our stuff put together, notes and Zoom link and all that good stuff. Anybody needs anything else? Nope. Goodbye. Have a great lunch. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> yes. Marty, and Marty, it's only an hour and a half to get here. <laughs> uh, I'm actually in Denver. So. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Bye. <laughs> So, um, the chat will be recorded as well, Marty. So, um, when uh, if you want, I, I can put a link to the um, chat in with the link to the audio and video. So, she asked if we can include a link to the chat too, and I said yes. So, I'm going to leave the meeting so that it will stop recording. All right.